Hello and welcome to Take Time. I am your host, Patrick Marlett, and welcome back to the part two Deep Blue SKX mod. If you haven't watched our part one video, I disassembled our SKX for the mod, and this part two video will hopefully wrap everything up by having a completed watch at the end of this video. And as I mentioned at the tail end of that video, I went ahead and cleaned this watch case. I did so using some stuff you probably have at home, some white, vinegar and some baking soda. Uh, that solution, it's like a two to one ratio, uh, one baking soda to two vinegar. Um, but I like to soak my watch pieces and cases in that solution because it does a great job of removing grime that has built up on these cases uh, over time. And now this case looks brand new, so I think we're okay to start up our project. The first thing I wanna get at is the bezel insert here. And we're gonna remove it by using the same tool I used earlier to remove the bezel from the watch head, except this time, I would suggest putting this on a flat surface if you're not comfortable and using this tool to wedge under the bezel insert, um, ideally without damaging the bezel insert, and then working it, now that it's under, working it around the exterior here to get the insert to pop out. So it's advisable to do this near the 12 o'clock position, either to the left or right, whichever way you feel comfortable turning this. I'm turning this clockwise around the interior again of that bezel insert to pry the insert out. And we wanna to start to the left or right of the bezel insert because that loom pip is adhered to the bezel itself. And we wanna to try to keep this intact so that we can use it on a future project or just have it as a spare. So what I have uh, off to the side here is some 3M adhesive tape. Now this is meant for the bezel insert. It's gonna hold up if this thing went diving or if it ever was submerged in water, it should be fine. So what I'm gonna do at this point is use my tweezers to remove the insert and place it on top of our 3M tape here. And with the bezel insert loosened, we can go ahead and pry this guy off of the bezel. And you'll notice as I do so, that loom pip will hopefully, there we go, stay attached to the bezel. Now here's what we'll do about that. Going ahead with our tweezers, we're gonna go grab the outsides of this loom pip and try to dislodge it from that old adhesive, like so. <laughs> it's sticking to my gloves, that's great. Uh, I'm gonna take that old insert and put this loom pip just inside, obviously reversing the manner in which I do so. Okay, I have the loom pip back in. My hands are shaking, can you see my hands are shaking? I don't wanna drop that loom pip, but I've got the loom pip back in the older insert, and I'm going to, do, I'm gonna do this off camera. I'm gonna put this on the back here so it's all one piece again, and I'll show you what that looks like. Whew. Pro tip, take the plastic gloves off before you try this because they will stick to the adhesive. Uh, wow, who, who'd have thunk, right? But uh, we have our 3M tape on the underside of this and what I'm gonna do is just punch out the center area. Uh, you can see it here. You don't need this. So I'm just gonna put that with the trash over there. Now I have the 3M strip on the back end of this uh, neatly pressed against the underside so we can use this on a future project should we choose. Um, doubtful I will because we're removing this for a ceramic one, but it's good to know that we have a backup bezel insert. Now as the old adhesive tape is still worn and stuck to the bezel, I'm gonna go ahead and use that same solution I mentioned earlier and just let this soak in there before I get to it and put on the new bezel insert. I'm going to take a mid-mod sip of tea. Uh, my girlfriend off camera made me a cup of tea and it's fantastic. I mean, it's the definition of gourmet. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, you know, it's, it was really hard to maintain my patience with that bezel insert because that adhesive was a tricky, tricky son of a gun. But uh, the trickiest bit for me at least is gonna be removing the handset from this SKX. I've never successfully removed and replaced hands on a watch. I've tried with several vintage models just to get the hang of it and it's, 
it's actually trickier than you imagine, especially with uh, cheaper tools like this. Um, I find that the nibs often bend the hands as you're trying to put them back in. So I think that's gonna take the most of my patience. So uh, while the movement's still running, hopefully it'll stop sometime soon, we are going to move on to replacing the crystal and the chapter ring inside of our watch head. So here's the new chapter ring I chose. I, I got this uh, again from Crystal Time Horology. And I got the both the crystal and the chapter ring here from Crystal Time Horology. I've used them before for other parts and uh, I like the quality of their parts. Their customer service is good enough. Um, I've never had to uh, talk to them about any Look at, look at that. What is this? This static nonsense. I've never had any complaints about their parts, so I've never had to talk to them about it. I will say that if you're in the US, the shipping times are a little long, but uh, the quality of these components are really nice. And this is the first time, obviously, I've ever seen one of these chapter rings in person. This is actually a new product from them, and it's really nice. Uh, just so you guys know, I bought all the components, so I'm not advertising for them. I just like the quality of their parts. Now this part of the mod is actually the easiest. If you look inside of the SKX case, you'll notice that there's a little uh, divot inside the interior there where the chapter ring lies. Well, guess what? On the opposite end of this chapter ring, there is also a little peg sticking out uh, right around the 12 o'clock position. So if I were to drop this into the case and move it around, it should line up neatly at that 12 o'clock position. And you can see how that's nestled into the groove inside the case. And this is what allows the chapter ring to stay put and not wind around whilst inside the case. Now, when I initially brought up this new modding segment on the channel, I got a lot of questions about the chapter ring and chapter ring alignment. Well, this is how these fit inside the case. If the chapter ring seems misaligned, it is sometimes a quality control issue, but more often times than not, you can just wiggle it so that the chapter ring is perfectly aligned and set the crystal in and it should look fine. Uh, some people remove the little prong and like turn it over. I've heard that's a solution. Um, I've never tried to fix the chapter ring on an SKX and or Seiko diver. Those seem to be the predominant problem children but uh, this, this seems fine to me. We'll see how it looks when the crystal's put in and then the dial realigned. Hopefully uh, we won't have any sort of misalignment issues with this, but those were common solutions I've been told about. And with the chapter ring in place, we can go ahead and punch that crystal back into our watch. And oh my gosh, you can see that second hand is still running around. That's okay. We'll work on that a little bit later, but let's go ahead and put this uh, in reverse back inside the press. And you know what? This die might be just a little bit too small for the job we're gonna do here. I might get some new dies before we start. Oh, and while I find the proper die, um, I have the appropriate crystal gasket here. Uh, it's a plastic ring that's gonna fit around the outside of the crystal as it's pressed in. It's not so necessary that you put silicone grease on this, to my understanding, more so the rubber gasket that's on the interior of the bezel. So I'll omit that for pressing the crystal in here. And this is what it looks like when you get one of the crystals from them. They provide the little uh, Seiko uh, gasket should you need it, uh, which is nice. I believe it was a minor additional charge. Um, wow, I cannot get this crystal out. There we go, there we go. Uh, but it comes in this little packaging with the part number on the outside in case you have a bunch of these lying around it's nice to know and it's got a lot of heft to it by the way this crystal uh, i'm gonna go ahead and line this up for us so we can begin pressing it into our watch case now mind you before i put this under the press the plastic gasket that's going to fit around that crystal also nestles neatly on the inside of the watch head and I'll show you where it's resting. It literally sits itself between the chapter ring and the crystal. And you can see what I'm talking about here. That black ring on the interior there is in fact the gasket that's gonna secure the crystal in place. Okay, these are the dies I'm going to go with here. 
I like to have the upper die that's pressing the crystal down just fit around the beveled edges of that crystal and somewhere more towards the inside. Uh, and the bottom is just going to be a flat die, something to hold the case in place. Now, the only tricky bit is getting this to press evenly across the crystal because we don't want our crystal to sit unevenly on top of our watch head, obviously. So hopefully we can get this done in one shot. Okay, this is horribly nerve wracking, but I've got everything lined up. Let's go ahead and press this sucker in and see if we can get it to go in nice and even. I'm just rotating it because I know firsthand that this crystal press is actually uneven on the press. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to alleviate some of that issue by tilting this around the crystal initially. Whew, that was, that was just a tad stressful. I had to take maybe four attempts to get this crystal to fit. I kept on imagining it was the crystal being cut wrong, but uh, it was cut right. It's just the tool I was using. Invest in a quality crystal press because the crystal kept on going in unevenly, but I did finally get it to go in evenly. I'll show you what that looks like on our B cam. So here is our crystal pressed inside of the case and it actually looks pretty fantastic. You can still see that the chapter ring is perfectly aligned as much as it can be. And you'll notice that the crystal is nice and evenly pressed inside of the watch case. Now I'm gonna go ahead and leave our watch head just off to the side for now. Now I just retrieved our bezel from the kitchen area and removed most of the adhesive. I just used these tweezers to gently push the adhesive remnants off the top of that surface and it's mostly gone at this point. And I went ahead and found a die that fits the bezel perfectly. We're not gonna worry about the insert quite yet. We just wanna get this bezel snapped back on to the case of our watch. So with this die in hand, I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Oh, but before we put the bezel back on top of the watch head, I should mention, we should put some silicone grease on the gasket that goes inside of here and put that gasket back inside of the bezel. And I'm just applying a small amount. I usually just dab my finger in there and then run that around the bezel. And I've got a microfiber rag off to the side here that'll wipe off any of that excess grease but just to coat the outer surface is all we really wanna do. We don't wanna see huge gobs of silicone grease on here before we put this back inside of the bezel. Now, the only thing I will suggest is that you make sure that the uh, gasket is neatly seated inside of the crevice that uh, was cut out for it inside of our bezel. And you can see that here. Make sure it's lined up nice and neat all around the interior there. All right, bezel neatly seated in place. Let's go ahead and press that inside of our watch head. Oh yeah, that's nice, nice and neat. So um, we've got this pressed back into place with some new grease and it has a really nice action to it now. You'll notice that when these gaskets dry up, the turn isn't as nice as it was before. Um, we still do have that same familiar tinny sound, as you can hear, but uh, it looks good. It's seated nice and evenly with the watch head, and I'm really happy with that. Now, you'll notice I didn't put the insert in yet. That's because I like to drop the movement in first and match up our bezel inserts 12 o'clock with the dial face. That way, we can make sure that it is perfectly aligned. All right, and with that neatly assembled, I'm gonna go ahead and leave this part of our project off to the side. This is a hand removal tool. Uh, you will generally use this to remove all hands at once. Um, I'm gonna to try to just use this mechanism to remove the second hand. Let's see if I can do that successfully. I'm gonna go ahead and hold the movement down and just secure the seconds hand here, pry it off. Oh yeah, 
Okay, so we have our seconds hand removed. That's one part of this tricky procedure. The next one's gonna be lining up our new seconds hand and punching it in. And again, with the movement running, it's gonna be difficult because the seconds hand's not gonna be able to settle. It's gonna keep on rotating along that peg that it's the second hand's gonna sit on. So let me see if I can't do that for you guys on camera. And here is the meatball seconds hand. If you guys must know of the part number, it's 3BX125FBBTS. Uh, again, this is an official Seiko part. I'm gonna go ahead and pry this out of this container and go ahead and put it on our watch. So here we have our lollipop seconds hand and you can see the little prong sticking outside the back end of it there. That's gonna go into the center uh, column of our watch head. And it's so hard for me even to see, but uh, it is down there. Um, oh boy, there's so much equipment between me and this watch. Let's see if I can handle this on camera. Let's go ahead and drop this. We're ultimately gonna transplant the watch onto that press, but what I want to do is just with my tweezers, get this nestled in just the approximate position uh, that it's going to need to be pressed. Okay, with all, all that neatly lined up, let's go ahead and try this out. Is it in? Hey, it's running. I am going to press it just a little bit more, but that's the gist of it. It's so stressful. Okay, yeah, I don't think I bent the seconds hand. I didn't. I didn't. Whew. It's microscopic how small the peg is that the little, the neck, the collar of the seconds hand is supposed to fit on. You need to drop that in. And with that thing moving, oh man, man, so many miracles happened today. Um, yeah, I'm going to press it just a little bit more to make sure it's flush with that peg, and then we can go ahead and drop this into our unit. But this uh, did the trick. Um, I forgot how much I paid for this, but yeah, you're going to want one of these to press it in. Or you can manually press it in if you want um, with a rod that has a similar tipped nib. But something like that is going to do the trick for getting a hand, uh, either a seconds, minute, or hour hand, back onto the dial. Now the tricky bit of business about all of this is just to make sure that the hand goes on evenly because if it comes down at an angle, there's a risk of that hand hitting one of the other ones. And you can see it's not necessarily parallel with the dial, uh, but neither was the minute hand when I took this watch out of the case. So they're both slightly at a slant, so you know the second shouldn't ever come in contact with that minute hand. Now my fingers were all over this crystal, so one thing to be sure of before we continue with our mod is to make sure to get the interior of that crystal nice and clean. And I actually use uh, some crystal cleaning solution, some lens solution. This is the same thing I use for my cameras. Um, if you don't have anything like that, you can probably use something that you have for your glasses. Um, or uh, anything around the house might not be a good suggestion but I would advise getting some optical solution, optical cleaning solution to just get that crystal nice and smudge free before you go ahead and drop the movement back in. And now that we're roughly particle free on our crystal here, I'm gonna go ahead and drop this case on top of the movement here. And what we'll do to finish up this procedure is flip it over make sure that where the crown and crown stem goes back into the movement is roughly aligned and we can actually just push this in by hand. Um, I will go ahead and secure the case back but that is roughly how it's gonna look. And with our movement neatly nestled inside of our watch head, all I'm doing right now is re-lubing the gasket on the crown with a little bit more silicone grease, rubbing off any excess that makes its way onto the stem, wiping that off on our microfiber cloth, and picking up our watch, let's go ahead and just drop this back in. This may require a little bit of working 
um, because it doesn't always just go straight into the movement, but once it connects, you can just push it straight in and our crown is ready to screw back down onto that watch head. We've got our old seconds hand off to the side here. Uh, this is the gasket that goes onto the case back. I'm gonna go ahead and hit this up with a little bit of silicone grease and then drop our case back on top of that watch head. Now, personally, I like to drop this along the outside of the case. I don't know which way is the most appropriate or best for doing this. Um, it's okay if a little bit of grease gets onto the case, uh, we can always wipe that off, but I like to put in the case back gasket before I secure the case back. Now that this gasket is neatly inside of our watch case, I'm gonna go ahead and drop this case back in. Um, I'll secure it off camera. Uh, same thing you did to remove it, except in reverse. <laughs> Rookie mistake. I. <laughs> somehow managed to scratch even with a c-clamp and my grip in place i just straight up scratched the case back little maker's mark my own signature to this mod um, the last thing that needs to happen is dropping in that ceramic insert i'm gonna line it up off camera just to make absolutely certain it's perfectly at 12 but we'll go ahead and press it on camera and do our reveal for you guys there. While lining up the bezel insert, it actually rested perfectly inside of the bezel. So without further ado, um, here is our deep blue SKX mod. And I'm actually quite happy with how everything lined up. That chapter ring is perfectly in line with the dial. Our lollipop seconds hand is a welcomed improvement over the old seconds hand. Our sapphire crystal looks exactly like the original. And our ceramic bezel insert actually looks quite a lot like the original as well, aside from the 12 o'clock triangle, uh, which is actually illuminated itself. And yeah, I'm, I'm so stoked that I had the opportunity to do this for you guys and that it came out so successfully, like um, without any real hiccups in my opinion. I'm, I'm very happy with the results here. Uh, guys, if you're interested in seeing some images of this lit up, uh, maybe a loom shot or two, feel free to join me over on Instagram to carry on the conversation. My handle is TakeTimePat. You can hashtag TakeTimePat to share any of your own mods over on Instagram with me as well. Oh man, I am so stoked to wear this watch. It looks really good, better than I uh, imagined it would. Um, the ceramic insert is a nice welcomed improvement. It, it has, it's like deeper in tone when outside of light and brighter in tone when in light, but I love it. Um, at any rate, guys, if you like this video or found entertaining, <laughs> informative, any of the above, feel free to hit that like button. It looks a little something like this. If you have friends, forums, or groups that were interested in modding their own Seiko, well, if you found this tutorial helpful, I'll advise you share it with them. Um, again, this is a first time modder's approach to the task. I'd never modded a Seiko SKX before. I, again, I practice on my own Seiko Turtle just to make sure I knew what I was doing roughly with the tools. Uh, and I was confident enough to film my second approach for you guys. And again, I'm really happy with the results. Uh, if you think it turned out well and your friends need a hand, well, go ahead and share this with them so that we can have this learning experience spread. You know, I don't think you need to take your parts and take your watch and send it to a repairman or, or someone to do it for you. There are services that do that. I think you can do it at home and I, it was proven, it was proven. I am super happy about the results here. So feel free to share this video with any of your pals that wanna try the same thing out themselves. And lastly, if you're new to the channel, well, I do videos like this twice a week. These uh, modding segments are new. I'd love to continue and do more of these in the future, um, likely with a different Seiko every single time. I know the Sea Urchin is a very popular modding watch. Maybe we can get one of those in. Again, my name is Patrick Marlette and thank you for the time.